Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back. Patrick here. And in this video, what we got to do is check whether this function x, absolute value x, is odd, even, or neither. So we haven't dealt with a function like this yet. And so let me rewrite the function here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you algebraically how it works, and then I'm going to show you graphically. We're going to take this function and graph it and then we can see graphically whether it's even, odd, or neither. So first thing we always got to do is check what's f of negative x going to be. If it's equal to f of x, it's even. If it's equal to negative f of x, it's odd. And then if it's neither of those, it's neither. So if we plug in negative x for all these x's, we'll have negative x out here and then negative x within this absolute value. However, we know that any negative is just going to turn to a positive. Okay, another way to see this is if we have a, b within an absolute value, that's the same as the absolute value of a times the absolute value of b. That's a property right there. So notice with negative x, there's like a negative 1 here. That's like the absolute value of negative 1 times the absolute value of x. The absolute value of negative 1 is just positive 1, and then the absolute value of x just stays as is. Right? So this is going to equal that. And so notice that we can rewrite this as negative in square brackets x absolute value x. We just took that negative, kind of put it on the outside. And then this is just equal to f of x. So we just proved that f of negative x equals negative f of x, which means f of x is odd, like that. All right, so this function here is odd. So just be careful with these absolute values here. Now, if we were to graph this, what we can do, we know that absolute value x if we split it up into a piecewise function, that's going to be what? Positive x when x is greater than or equal to 0, and then negative x when x is negative, right? Because a negative, we're going to have to change to a positive. So we take that negative value, multiplied by negative 1, changes it to a positive. So that means that this function, using this property here, plugging it in for this absolute value x, this would be x times positive x when x is greater than or equal to 0, and then x negative x when x is less than 0, like that. And so this would end up being x squared when x is greater than or equal to 0, and then negative x squared when x is less than 0, like that. Okay, so basically, this function here is like that, right? This function is the same as that piecewise function. And so if I graph that piecewise function, when x is greater than or equal to 0, it's x squared, which is like that. And then it's negative x squared when x is less than 0. And negative x squared is basically a parabola that's opening downwards, but it's only when x is less than 0, so we would only put this portion here. So that is how this function looks. Okay, Almost like x to the power of 3, but it's not the same thing. But it kind of looks like it from a higher level. Um, yeah, so that is this function. That's the graph of that function. Notice it has point symmetry. If I take this portion, reflect it in the x-axis, I'd end up with that. And then if I reflect it in the y-axis, I end up with that. Right? Or if I take this, reflect it in the y, then reflect it in the x, or reflect it in the x, then reflect it in the y, I end up with that portion. So you can visually see as well that this function is odd. 